Hi, I'm Paige and welcome to my sewing corner. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made these pajama bottoms using the Carolyn Pajama Pattern by Closet Core Patterns. Now, I followed the pattern very closely, but I did take out a few pieces of the pattern because I didn't have enough fabric. So one of the things that I did was extended the side seam up on the front pattern piece just to create a flat panel instead of cutting to create an opening for a pocket. So it's just one piece. Very, very simple alteration. And then I also narrowed the cuff of the shorts. And again, that's just because I didn't have extra fabric. And with that said, let's get right into the tutorial. Okay, so what you're going to need for these shorts is just the pattern some contrasting or matching piping, the waistband elastic, which is one and a half inches wide, some pretty ribbon if you want to use it, it's completely optional, matching thread and the fabric. So I'm gonna take my fabric and cut out all my pieces. And because this is plaid, I took time to make sure I had everything cut to where it would match, and then I serged all the seams just to make things easier for myself. So I'm going to put those pieces together with the right sides facing each other and I'm going to be taking care to match my plaid. When I'm matching plaid or stripes, I'm always making sure that I'm matching far away from the edge because when you stitch about five, five eighths of an inch away from the edge, your plaid might not be matching that far in and it could be matching just on the edge. So I match a good distance inward. And then I'm going to be marking the center front, which is what that mark is. And then this dot is where I switch my stitching. So I'm gonna stitch with a basting stitch down to that dot and then change to a regular stitch. And then right at this point where we switched our stitches, we're going to clip in, but not through the stitching line. And here you can see that I am folding all of the fabric over to one side. And then I'm going to be making a mark on where that dot is on the front side. And this is where my bar tack is gonna go. So I'll do a bar tack right there where the pin is and then do a curved stitching line over the top. So here I've done my stitching and the way that I did that is I top stitched on that crotch seam and then switched to do a bar tack and stitched all the way up for the faux fly front. You can end up opening those basting stitches if you want, but do that later if you're going to. Now we're going to get the back pieces together and this is far simpler. So you're just gonna match any lines if you have them and stitch normally from top to bottom. And then I'm going to iron my seams and top stitch. I just like the sturdiness of that and keeps everything laying to one side really nicely. And I treated them the exact same so that now when I'm nesting them together, the seams are actually gonna be on the opposite sides and that reduces bulk in that center junction. So I'll just pin the crotch seam together and stitch that. And this is what it looks like. You can see that the top stitching is not even, but the actual seam is even. And the seam allowances are nested one to one side and one to the other side. Now I'm going to match up my plaid lines on the sides. And I also top stitched those as well. For the waistband, you're just going to stitch both sides, fold it in half, and then fold the seam allowance of one side up, the inside of the waistband. So here, this isn't 
necessarily something you have to do. I just decided to add buttonholes to slide my ribbon through. So I put a little piece of interfacing and marked the buttonholes and made sure that they were evenly spaced. And as I always do before I actually sew into my fabric, I always test my buttonholes on a scrap. So here I'm just gonna align where I want the buttonhole to be and just let the machine do the work. Then I'll just clean up all of those random threads and put some fray check over my buttonholes and then I'll let that dry. And then when they're dry completely, you can cut the buttonholes open. Then you can begin to attach the waistband to the shorts by just matching up that the seam of the waistband and the back seam of the shorts and then the front seam and the front seam of the waistband. And then you'll match the sides after those have been in place pinned in place. So once everything is nice and smooth and pinned, you can sew all the way around to attach it. And you can see that I went and surged it too and then pressed it the seam allowance up into where the waistband will be. And then now with that folded over section that you ironed, you can align that with your stitching line Stitch in the ditch from the front side, making sure to catch the waistband, just like that, catching it a little bit, but here from the front, you don't see the stitching because you're just stitching right in that seam line. And I left an opening at the back and that's to slide the elastic in. So I always just put a big safety pin on and scrunch it through. <laughs> I sewed the ends together after I double checked to make sure it fit me well and then you can slide it into place and adjust everything where it needs to be. Just slowly work everything where it needs to be and I'm going to add a little makeshift tag by just cutting some of that ribbon, folding it in half, and then stitching it in that opening. There you go. Easy, simple tag. And I just sewed the same way into the stitching in the ditch and just catching a small amount of the underside of the waistband. And here I'm just stretching it over and over just to evenly disperse the fabric with the elastic. You can top stitch along the front and back and the sides or horizontally along the waistband, but if you're gonna do it horizontally, you need to be sewing while you're stretching the elastic. I went ahead and stitched horizontally with a tiny zigzag or lightning bolt stitch is what I call it. Um, it's very, a very subtle zigzag and I just held it stretched as I sewed and then released it. And in doing that it kind of creates a little bit of a narrower channel for the ribbon and holds everything in place so you don't have any twisting of the waistband or bunching. And then I'll just take the ribbon through the same way I did with the elastic. And that's it, just cut your ends and simple as that, tie your ribbon and you have this cute little extra detail. And for the last step, we're going to be putting the piping and the cuffs on. So the way that I do this is I attach the piping to the actual pant or short leg first. And I like doing the seam on the outside because if you're gonna have any bulk, you don't want it to be in between your legs. So 
I start at the outside seam and attach the piping. And then I take the front and back of the cuffs and lay them out how I want them to be on each side and I'm going to attach them to each other. So you just open them up and put them right sides together and just stitch with a normal seam allowance on both sides to create a loop. Okay, so I just treated the cuffs the same way I did the waistband. I folded them in half and then on the inside I ironed the seam allowance inward and the raw edge is the one that's going to be attached to the pant leg on top of the piping. So I just took some time to align them and you'll pin it and put it into place and stitch right up against the piping all the way around. And then just as you did with the waistband, you'll pin everything just slightly outside of that stitching line and then stitch right in the ditch between the piping and the cuff. And then once you've done that, the cuffs are held in place and it's finished. And there you have it. I can tell you already, they're amazing. This is my second pair that I've made. The first pair has the pockets, has all the details, made 100% like the pattern and then this one they're both awesome and I definitely recommend that pattern as well as the top the pajama top that comes in that pattern it's really great too if you liked this video go ahead and give a thumbs up down below and if you want to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already just click subscribe and the bell alert and you'll be notified anytime that I post a video in the future you can let me know what you thought down in the comment section and also it's a great resource for questions because I try to answer almost all the relevant questions that pertain to the video and if you have a similar question to somebody else you may find the answer already there. And as always, go get creative and make a pair of pajama bottoms that you love. Bye.